I've bought and sold a home and dealt with realtors. Never again. Us millennials, aka the future, want convenience over dealing with slimy real estate agents. Don't be salty that you are going the way of the taxi driver. The point about realtors knowing the local market was incoherent and illogical. Feel free to elaborate. Elaborate, I will, Agent Smith. Thank you, first of all, for the comment over on the Real Word podcast. Please, if you guys aren't familiar with that other channel, please go check it out. I really do appreciate the comment and the ability to respond. Thank you for that. From one millennial to another, I am Byron Lazine, and welcome back to this channel. All right, so on this video, I'm going to go through three key things about open door and the future of their impact on the market. Okay, so number one, I'm going to address that millennials do not value this convenience that we talk about over their money on their largest investment. I'm going to show you exactly why the stats, the numbers do not back that up. Okay, number two, convenience is not for everybody. I'm going to talk about that. And number three, I will get into the open door earnings report for quarter three. They were great but what does that really mean for the future? So that's what we're gonna cover here. So number one, there were 37%, 37% of all the buyers this year in 2021 were millennials. So 37% of all the home purchases, and there's gonna be about 7.1 million home sales in the United States this year. 37% of those, roughly 2.6 million homes sold were sold to millennials this year okay and these are important numbers here to keep in mind that we've really uh, in the last 10 years we've always seen over 5 million home sales we're obviously going to see more this year and looks like trending into next year as well those are important numbers that i get into the open door earnings I'll, I'll bring those back up but right now we're just dealing with millennials want this type of convenience over this open door convenience, right? Where open door is going to buy your home and sell your home for a fee, right? And then they're gonna relist your home and you're not gonna have to do showings and you're not gonna have, you're gonna have the convenience of not having to do open houses and go on the open market and go into a competitive based market. That's the convenience for the buyer in that situation. And this is a this is a product I buying you know, somebody, a house flipper coming in, buying your house and letting you move on into the next one and maybe even helping you finance that house. That is for some people, right? But it's not for 100% of millennials that actually care about their money and care about their money growing and their investment into the future. Okay, so if 37% of all home buyers this year were millennials, that means 2.6 million of the 7.1 million homes sold, sold to millennials. Open door is going to have, now they're they're not on track to do this this year, but let's just bump their number up. In quarter three, they had 6,000 total homes sold. That was really good. That was up 72% versus the second quarter. But let's just use that 6,000 number and let's multiply by that, that by four quarters and make it 24,000 homes for them. Okay. They're not going to hit that this year. They do according to their uh, according to their earnings report call, which I did listen to, have $9 billion of additional money that they can borrow. $9 billion, if you look at the average price point in the country, would give them about 24,000 more home purchases. So let's give them the 24,000 and let's just throw a thousand on top. Let's call it 25,000 home sales for open door in a year. And let's just, let's pl play with me here. Let's let's play fairyland here. Let's pretend all 25,000 homes sold to only, uh, or, or were purchased from only millennials, okay? There was 2.6 million home sales for millennials, okay? 2.6 million. 2.6 million, we're gonna give Open Door 25,000 of those. That's not even 1% of the entire millennial market, let alone the 7.1 billion. 7.1 billion, we'd be talking about 0.003% of the entire market. Not 3%, not 1%, 0.003%. Okay, this is under 1% of the entire millennial market what Open Door is 
doing. Okay, so the data shows us that millennials want to see a competitive environment for their biggest asset. They want to see people competing for their home sale when they go to sell their house. Okay, uh, now let, let's get into that example because number two, convenience is not for everyone. It's just not. Some people are going to want to get out of a house very quickly. I just bought a flip in my local market because I knew the situation. I, I knew of the deal and I knew that the sellers wanted this type of convenience, meaning they inherited the property. They were living in two different states. They didn't want to fix it up. In fact, they had it on the open market. And to Agent Smith's point in the Real World podcast in the comment section there, like just didn't want to go through, not the sleazy agent part. I mean, that, there are some bad agents, okay? If you watch enough of my content, I am beating up agents all the time, looking to raise the bar in the industry for sure. But there are a lot of great agents. There are a lot of agents that are very, very helpful. They just didn't want to go through the process of another inspection, a buyer that uh, was maybe undereducated, that you know didn't realize what it was going to take to fix that property up. So we ended up buying that one. And that was a cash offer. And that was, hey, move out in, in two weeks. You don't have to do inspections. You don't have to do anything, right? That is for some people, but it's not for everyone. And certainly a lot of millennials that care about their money, it's not going to be for them either. Let's just look at uh, a $300,000 home. Okay. Now open door. And when Zillow was doing eye buying, they kept using this term fair offer. We're giving everybody a fair offer, a fair offer. Well, we know that Zillow giving an above fair offer, an above market value offer didn't work because they just ended their iBuying program. It's over. It's gone. See you later, Zillow, right? They were overpaying for homes and they got really hurt in doing that. So a fair offer, if somebody's going to be you know, profitable like Open Door, and we'll get into those earning reports here at the end of this video, if they're going to be profitable, they've got to make a fair offer that includes their fees, which are, you know, they're, they're, if you go on their website, go on, on Open Door's website, it will tell you that their fees are 5%, not the traditional 6% as an agent. There's a lot of agents doing 5%. Their fees, and then they've got some other hidden fees in there, are actually over 5%. You're paying more for this convenience than you would going on the traditional market when, when you sell to open door, but they're making a fair offer that is close to market value so that they can make a spread on their money. Listen to their earnings call. They talk about just that, making a spread. Okay. So you're getting a fair offer from one buyer. You've got one buyer in that situation. You haven't gone on the market. You've gotten a fair offer in their terms from one buyer that you're negotiating with. If you take that same $300,000 number, and you just go out at market value, say you go out at, you want to leave yourself a little negotiating room, you go out at 310000 all of a sudden, yeah, you're going to have to deal with the stuff that people that want a convenience may not deal with. You're going to deal with open houses and all these showings. Usually, you're going to have anywhere from 6 to 10 showings, which will equal an offer when you're listed at the market value, which is like basically all the comps in the area. They're all selling at 300,000. You you could go anywhere from like two to 7% over that price all the way up to 10%. You could go to 330 if you want and still generate showings. But you're gonna deal with showings, you're gonna deal with people. And ultimately the data shows us you're probably gonna end up closer to 300 once you're done negotiating. Or if you go out and right now, in this market especially, you work with an agent who says, hey, we're going to do some real aggressive marketing. It's going to be painful in the next couple of weeks in the sense that we're going to need access to your home. We're going to have a lot of people coming into your home. There's going to be open houses. Uh, we're going to plaster this property above and beyond just Zillow where three out of four home shoppers are looking. We're going to be doing private tours. We're going to be telling everybody in our office. We're going to be sending this out to our database. We're going to be contacting buyers who are looking for properties and letting them know of this opportunity coming on. We're going to be getting this excitement going. We're going to be creating a real bidding war on your property. We're going to go ahead and list this property 
at $290,000. You can go see story after story after story that now the amount of people that are seeing the property, they start to multiply by 10, by 20, by 30x. Before you know it, you're in a situation where you've had 30 or 40 showings. You've got more people beating down the door to get into the property and you have a bidding war going on because you listed it under market value, okay? You went really aggressive and you exploded your opportunities to make money, okay? Now, when you have that chance at a bidding war, you could, and we've seen countless stories this year where people have bid it all the way up to $350,000 and they've waived the appraisal and that seller's walking around with an extra $50,000 in their pocket. That's real money. That's real money. That's additional money than what that one buyer would have given them. This is basically like economics 101, supply and demand. If you have one buyer for your product and you need to sell it, and they're offering you a price, that's your only opportunity. If you have multiple buyers for a product and it's a real fair price, it's a great offering, they all want the property, they're going to start to compete for the property, okay? So convenience is absolutely for some. The situation I, told, I just described where uh, I bought a property as an investor this year from somebody who inherited a property and didn't want anything to do with it. Absolutely, convenience is there. You have to move in two to three weeks, you're taking a great job and you just don't have the 60 to 90 days to go on the traditional market to recoup every single dollar you possibly can in this asset. Absolutely, I understand that and, and this is never going away. Open door has been around forever. It's been that little sign on on the telephone poles in everybody's neighborhood, black and yellow sign, we buy houses for cash, okay? Open Door's just a lot more sophisticated. They've got a lo lot more money behind them and they're a publicly traded company. But it's never ever been more than really, it's never even been close to 1% in the market. And even with Open Door, with all the cash that they're spending and we're about to get earnings, they are spending a lot of it to generate this de these deals and this awareness. Even with the cash that they're spending, even you know, even with the nine billion dollars of additional borrowing power that they now have, they're not anywhere close to one percent of the total market. They're just not okay. They're they're we're giving them more deals than they've actually done. We're projecting for them, and they are at 0.003 percent of total home sales in this entire country. That's with us giving them more sales than they've actually accomplished to that to this point. And the market has to keep doing good, right? We know what happened in March to Open Door, March of 2020. They shut the doors down completely on iBuying. The market changed like that. They got scared and stopped. That's what happened, okay? They were smart maybe to stop, Maybe not, right? Obviously, the, the market kept accelerating. They could have gotten some deals in that time. Uh, but if it didn't accelerate, maybe they would have been smart. Maybe this would have put them out of business. They're not Zillow where they make a whole bunch of other money in other places. If they don't make money on their flips, they go out of business. So they played it conservative. Now, you will see, before I get into their earnings report, you will see them start to, them meaning Open Door, start to get more traditional. They will start to do what Zillow's doing and try to get into the real estate agent game, the brokerage game, because that's where all the ancillary products come from. That's where the money is for these companies, ch capturing the mortgage, the title, the escrow. And what do you need to capture mortgage, title, escrow? You need a lot of transactions. They'll never get to enough transactions in this model to go out and get after that business. And those sleazy real estate agents you talk about, they don't get any money for the mortgage, the title, or the escrow. The really good agents, the top 1% in your community, which you probably didn't work with when you, you probably didn't do your homework, Agent Smith, when you were interviewing agents, you probably didn't go to the best team in your market. Those agents that really care about their community and that are really working hard, 
that are not getting all that ancillary product, they're doing it because they really care. They're doing it because they're great at their job. Yes, they're doing it to make income at the end of the day, but there is a lot of great agents helping a lot of people. Let's get into the open door earnings report. And what is this going to mean for, uh, you know, for the future of open doors? Is there is their earnings report in quarter three so good that it means they will be undoubtedly just taking over the industry and everybody's going to want to sell their house with this I buyer model. All right. If we look year to date, uh, they're still well off their, their max here. And I waited uh, just until after the, because I had another comment from Agent Smith in the comments. I really appreciate you. I, the a name Agent, I don't understand. Is, are you an agent or what's going on there? Anyways, um, you know, asking about, hey, did you see the quarter three um, market update? Yeah, I did. They're still uh, year to date, you know, not even where they started. They're well off their peak of uh, $36 back in February. They were down as low as $19 before the earnings call went out last night. I waited till after pre-market and the market has started now. You know, they they, uh, they did bounce back here. Let's just refresh this to make sure. Yep. All right. So here they are. They're up 16%. That's all the pre-market and earnings call money. They were down 8 or 9% yesterday, but they're not even back to uh, where they were at the beginning of the year. They're still down 5.6% with that big increase today of 16%. Who knows where they go the rest of the day, obviously. Um, but uh, you know, year to date, they are significantly down from uh, from their peak, and overall year to date, they're down, you know, five percent. So okay, they still haven't hit the Zillow market cap, which Keith Raboys was uh, really saying that they would on Wednesday. He said they would hit Zillow's market cap this Wednesday, which has touched fifty billion this year. They haven't done that yet. Their earnings report, the investors didn't go like crazy to rush into this stock. They again, they were down eight or nine percent leading in just on Wednesday leading into the earnings report. And they've got they got that eight or nine back and they went up eight or nine percent. Good. I'm not saying that's not good, uh, but it's not like taking over the world or anything here, right? So the revenue is up uh, 2.3 and that's 91% versus quarter two, 2.3 billion. Again, with the 6,000 homes sold, which is up 72%. Okay, so they had a huge increase in quarter two in homes sold, uh, in quarter three rather, in homes sold versus quarter two. Quarter three is always gonna be your biggest closeout, right? You're gonna get the most opportunities of buying homes late in quarter one, early spring when people wanna sell. And then you got to fix these up. Open door does some light fix up. They're mostly buying newer homes, by the way, because they don't want to get into full fledged renovations. Uh, their model, their model is to buy newer homes in predictable markets. Uh, they certainly have been able to predict prices better than Zillow. There's no question about that, and their earnings in this particular segment of their business uh, reflects that. Um, but that that's going to be their best quarter, guys. Here, uh, you know, over the next. Couple and they've said that they're saying that in their, their earnings report that you know over the next couple quarters you're not going to see the, these kind of numbers. Okay, so um, all their numbers are good. There, there's really nothing here that's not good. There's nothing here that is so amazing that you've got to say, "Whoa, uh, you know, Open Door is about to just be the new model that takes over the business." Their gross margin uh, contribution margin is down quarter three to quarter two. Uh, their adjusted net income is up, uh, but their gap net income is down. Uh, so they're, they've expanded into new markets. That's going to bring new stress onto the business model. They've purchased another 15,000 homes. That's up 79%. And uh, they, they have, they're sitting on 17,000 homes, representing $6.3 billion in value. That's uh, value up 130% from quarter two. Real estate in this country in 2021 is up 20% on the year. Now I've reported on this channel and a whole bunch that Goldman Sachs, for example, is predicting that it goes up another 16% in 2022. Fannie and Freddie are predicting that it's going to be about an eight or 9% appreciation. You can find a whole bunch of people that think those numbers are crazy. I do believe real estate is going to continue to appreciate in 2022, but eventually it's not going to continue to appreciate 
and their margins aren't that big, meaning open doors, where when the music does stop, when inventory rates spike, does anybody in the comments believe at some point, it, not inventory, well, yes, inventory, but also interest, mortgage interest rates spike. Does anybody believe that when mortgage interest rates spike in the comments that home values are gonna go down? Because they always do. 1% increase in mortgage interest rates means that you see 10% drop in home values. And if we're sitting, open doors sitting, uh, when that happens on 17,000 homes and values overnight drop 10% in the market, that's going to have a real hit to their balance sheet. And, and that's what's become real clear with the problems that Zillow got into, not knowing the local market. And, and I know it was, you know, it was claimed that I don't, I'm incoherent when I say I don't know the local market. Well, they didn't know the local markets. They were, they were basing everything off of an algorithm, okay, and, and what the prices are based off of that. Open door sitting on 17,000 homes. If you see a 10% drop in home values tomorrow because interest rates go from three to four and a quarter because, I don't know, inflation is happening and they've got in the 10 year it goes up and whatever, and like anything could happen to pop these interest rates right now in the world we're living in, they're going to be in big trouble. Okay. And so while the numbers look good in the best bull market we've ever been in and you know, the earnings call was great. It was vastly different from, you know, what, what Zillow uh, just did. But if that happens, their balance sheet in 90 days isn't going to look so good. They're going to be crying the blues. I promise you right now, Open Door is going to get into other areas. They're going to become very traditional. They're going to look like a traditional real estate agent pretty soon, pretty soon, because they know that that's where the money is. They've there's There's already been moves that they're making that point in that direction. Okay. Uh, if you enjoy this content and, and please don't be afraid to voice a different opinion like Agent Smith did. Agent Smith, I applaud you. I really appreciate you. I would love to know if you are an agent. That is a peculiar, peculiar uh, YouTube channel name, but I really appreciate you uh, continuing the conversation and, and, and even though you called agents sleazy and I've met sleazy agents myself, uh, I hope you would at least look at it from the other side that the majority of the market just doesn't side with what you're saying, that the data doesn't back it up. The majority of the market still believes in real estate agents. I know the majority of the market is not using taxis anymore, although they're using Ubers, which is basically the same thing. Uh, I think you would agree that the majority of the market is still using an agent because the majority of the market still at the end of the day wants the most money they can possibly get for their home. And if agents don't provide that opportunity for them going forward, then you're right, my friend, they will go away. But Rich Barton, the CEO of Zillow, who started Expedia, who put travel uh, agents out of business, him and people like, you know, Eric Wu and Keith Raboys at Open Door have been trying for decades to do the same to agents. And because of the value that the great agents are bringing to the consumers, they haven't been able to do it yet. They haven't been able to. If they bring more value to consumers in their local markets and bring them more money on their biggest asset than they've ever had before, then that'll change. But until then, I don't see it happening. And I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.